Hey, good morning, guys. Welcome back to our off-grid cabin build here on our homestead in North Idaho. Today, we are going to be installing some Geldwin interior doors here. This is a Geldwin solid core pre-hung door that we're going to be installing here for the bathroom. It's time to replace our existing door with a good door. It can get a little bit noisy when you're just using house wrap for your bathroom door. It's good, it's good for us, but I don't think our company would be too thrilled to use our bathroom. Definitely not. <laughs> so we're getting this ready. We wanna start having dinner guests over here coming up real soon, uh, like tomorrow night. So we've gotta get the bathroom done. All right, I watched a couple YouTube videos on how to do this. Apparently there's multiple ways to put in an interior door. I'll show you the way that we're gonna do it today. Have I ever installed an interior door before? Nope. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open this guy up and see, uh, see what happens. Take our cardboard off. Yeah, this guy right here. Pretty sure that's gonna have to come off of there. There we go. We won't take it all the way off yet though. Wait till we get it over where it goes. All right, solid core doors are quite a bit heavier than the hollow ones. But they say they're 50% quieter. <laughs> that way you don't have to hear what's going on in the bathroom. We don't want people to be self-conscious. Yeah, look at that, Joe's just gonna fit. Give me those cool. <laughs> We've got shims, we've got screws, we've got the screw gun. We got Level all. <laughs> oh, one more thing. It'll be back. Level. Level. All right. So weird. I thought that door was white, but it's not white compared to the wall. No. So I guess you could paint it if you wanted, huh? Oh, yeah, it's primed right now. So it's just, uh, just like a base coat. Yeah. I think we need to um, we need to lift it off of the ground a little bit because we don't know exactly what kind of flooring we're gonna do. Had we known, then we would we would leave it up the right amount for the type of flooring. But since we don't know, we're just gonna just gonna guess. I doubt our flooring is gonna be any thicker than that. <laughs> yeah? Mm-hmm. So we'll use these. Okay. Yeah, I'll lift the door up. Would you keep these together mm -hmm. and just slide it underneath here? Okay. And underneath here. Okay. So that the doors, so that it's actually sitting on those things. Okay. All right, ready? Come 
never knew until building this house how important shims are. Yeah. Huh. Okay, see that? It needs to be flush up there. Okay. Probably have to put your wood on to know for sure, but it looks pretty good. Might be even too high. It's going to be good right there. Okay. Nice. Cool. So now, we want to check, apparently, and make sure that this jam side, no, the hinge side, is plumb. Right, so we'll screw this side in up here, and then we'll adjust the bottom out just a little bit to make it plumb. Yep. Nice. And I said that you put your screws in right here, so that when the door closes, mm. it covers up the screws. Okay, there's your gun. So, that's what we'll try. I think we should countersink them a little bit? Probably. Let me go get a bigger drill bit. Be right back. Okay. I'm going to drill a countersink hole here so that just so it'll be pretty. One right here. screw holes that you have to putty over. But that's the way we're doing it. So we want this guy here to be level. And that's right there. Hmm. We do have a little bit of a bow in here, so we'll put some shims in there. Oh, it pushed out. It's okay. Drill a couple holes in here. Whoa, wait. That was soft. Let's just get the screws started in there and then we'll adjust the gap here with the shims and then we can put them in. Okay. shims put in and cut off all right so that's looking good we do have these screws here we'll go ahead and we will putty those later after we make sure that the door is going to be good for a little bit of time right because this is the first interior door I've ever installed so check it out we close the door 
right? It wants to stay closed. See, no doorknob, it just stays there. Even, even down to there. So that's cool, everything looks good there. If we open it up, say that far, it stays right there. Open it up to here, it stays right there. See, stays right there. Open it up to there, it stays right there. We'll have to get a door stop so we don't put the doorknob into the wall here. Let's go ahead, we'll install the doorknob and then um, we'll look at putting the trim around the door on the inside. Here's our doorknob right here. Go ahead and get it open. Ooh, that was loud. We got lots of doorknob pieces here. Instructions. Striker plate. Screws. It came with one of these again. I don't know what this thing is for. I don't know. I don't understand that thing. All right, let's go ahead and put this bad boy in. Well, this guy's probably gonna go in first. Something like that, how does that fit? It doesn't go in all the way. I think we're gonna have to uh, cut this out a little bit. That would work, but it's gonna look funky. All right, look at how this thing's sticking out. Can you see that? All right, we're gonna have to do some work on that hole right there. It's not deep enough. All right, well, let's just go around it with a knife here and we'll score it. If we had a small chisel, that would be cool. We don't. So we'll try a screwdriver. Not the best. Try the knife here. Slice it away. Make sure you don't cut yourself. If you need to wear safety glasses, then wear safety glasses. You don't want to poke your eye out. That's coming out pretty good. I do think some wood chisels would be pretty awesome to have. But the amount of times I'm actually going to probably use them, I don't know. As if we were doing like timber framing or something like that. Alright, let's try that. You can get a lot done with a pocket. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's pretty good. It's a lot better. Not quite perfect, but it's a lot better. Alright, let's try that. Ooh, perfect. These two screws right here. By the way, guys, this is my world's favorite screwdriver. I was talking about it in the previous video, but I couldn't find it. I found it. Look, 10 in one. It's a link down in the description if you want to check it out. Oh, it's beautiful. It's perfectly flush. See what you can do with a pocket knife, man? It's beautiful, look at that. Just like that. Got long screws like this we need to put in there. Two of them. Just stick them in there and kind of fish around. Oh, I guess we should try it. Yep. Works. Try the lock. No opi. No worky, unlock it, works. All right, so now for the striker plate. Let's just close the door and see how it's gonna work without the plate on it, just to make sure. Go ahead and close the door. Oh yeah, it'll work, man. Look at that. So let's get the striker plate. This is this guy right here. Get that on there. All right, this guy. Hopefully it's gonna fit the way it's supposed to. Bam, oh yeah, that'll work. All right, so, let's take our screws, glue them in the center, give it a tap. One last test here. Oh man, the door is good. Try it again. Oh. Isn't that glorious? Now you can use the restroom in secure, a T, security, with security, something like that. Except for these big cracks here, right? Like that, you can see right in here, can't you? So let's see what we can do about that. So what I'm thinking is we take a piece of this, right? This is some um, one by three pine, and we're gonna use 
one by three pine as our trim along here like that. We're not gonna stain it, we're just gonna varnish it so that we get a, it's just the natural pine color. Should I go ahead and cut 45s here? All right, bring this one in with a 45, which would be a more like finished look. But, I mean, this is our cabin. A more rustic look, right, would be just to come straight across and then come straight down with it. It's a more rustic look. This right here is the polyurethane that we used on the trim. Went with the more rustic look and just put some little brad nails in here to hold it in place. But let me shut the door here. Check it out. Man, it looks cool. I like it. I like it like this instead of the 45s. So we just put Varathane on it, guys. It's got that natural look to it. This mirror is a mirror that we had in another spot in the cabin. Just put it in here temporarily. Obviously, it's too big. It covers up the light up there. We got the light switches in. And temporarily, we just have a standard plug in here because the whole house is protected by a GFI on the inverter, right? So that's a GFI because of the other one. And so later on though, once we wire the house in permanently, we will switch this out for a proper GFI. This one's taped because it just goes up here and there's no need to be turning that on yet. Light switch works here for our fan up there. So of course we still got the trim to put around here, but now that we got this trim in, we're like debating, oh man, do we want to stain it dark? So we're kind of waiting to make sure that we either want to go with the light or dark. I don't know, I like the light. It's like really clean, but I think a dark trim would stand out a little bit better. I don't know, tell me what you think. Leave it light like this for all of the trim down here and around the tub. Also, um, in an earlier video, some of you guys commented about using wood right here, right? Like that that wouldn't be a good idea. And I see where you're coming from. But we have had, we've been using this shower for, I don't know, a while now. Like a couple months probably. And there's never any water that gets up here or over here. Right? No water ever gets around that area. So I'm thinking, we're going to use this. We'll probably put like three coats of erythane on it. And then, um, of course, silicone it, right, where it comes up against here. Silicone along there. And give it a try, right? We already have the wood, so we might as well go ahead and use it. If in 10 years, right, it fails, well, that's 10 years down the road. We can uh, change it out for something different then. Now, don't laugh at this, but I'll show you how we have... Uh, the wiring down here temporarily all right so we're not putting any sheetrock here so that the inspector can inspect the electrical right for the rough end and so we've got this done and i believe it's all done right right it's secured eight inches from the box um using 12 gauge wire for the bathroom and so the power then the idea is it'll come up through the floor here and it will come into the outlet and then from the outlet we'll take power to the lights but for right now we have this extension cord running into here, which brings in power, which eventually gets over to here, to this guy, and goes underneath the crawl space. Then I'll show you where it goes here really quick. All right, so it comes out over here. I know it's kind of crazy, so don't laugh. Or go ahead and laugh. Put your comments down below on how messed up it is. I don't care. It'd be fun to read them. Then it comes out right here and goes underneath the snow Ooh. all right come on guys it's plugged in right here from right here comes in um comes in right down there comes up over here into the inverter over there all right so this is a 2000 watt inverter can surge up to 6000 watts again in a previous comment i think somebody or a couple people said that there's no way that surges to 6000 watts that's what it's rated for. Whether it does it or not, I don't know. So our two charge controllers and our batteries down here from these solar panels right there. You wanna see what components we're using for our solar system, I will put links down in the description of this video so you can go ahead and check them out for yourself. And so that brings us back into the bathroom and our light and our fan.
If you want to see more about what's going on here on our homestead, there's a video right over here that you would probably like to check out. Otherwise, I hope you have a really great day. Keep smiling, and I'll see you over in that video in just a second.